Hey guys, my name is Austin Bryan, and I'm doing my video on the final public lecture, which was the physics of breakfast given by Dr. Peter Yunker. I'm going to be focusing on the coffeeing effect, and specifically I'm going to be focusing on the forces of cohesion and surface tension, um, and how this kind of contributes to the coffee ring effect. Now, as Dr. Yunker said, when we have coffee spilled on a surface, it kind of forms a kind of circular shape. But as it evaporates, instead of leaving a uniform stain, we have a inner region of a light stain and an outer region, which is a very dark stain generally. Um, and we're going to kind of get into why that happens. Now, when we have this uh, coffee spilled onto a surface, we can view the coffee as a solution where the actual coffee molecules are the solute and the solvent is water molecules. Now, this circular shape we have, um, and we have this ring that doesn't seem to shrink really. We have this outer ring. Now, we have this outer ring form because when we have liquid on a solid surface, the edges of this little circle shape get pinned down, um, which we're, scientists really aren't sure why it happens. There's some theories, but nothing's been proven yet. And so since these edges are pinned, um, as the liquid starts to evaporate, there must be some sort of way for the edge molecules to be replaced as they get evaporated. And so what we see in this coffee ring effect oops, um, is actually almost all the evaporation is happening at this outer ring. And so as this, the molecules start to evaporate at this outer ring, that's where they want to evaporate, that's where they have the most contact with the air, which is what they're evaporating into, we have to have molecules from the inside that go and replace these molecules on the outside. Now these molecules are still the solution, um, <clears throat> but as it evaporates, the solvent is evaporating, which is water, and is leaving that coffee on the outside, which is where we can sort of see this ring start to darken. And so as those molecules have moved out, they're going to be on this outer edge now, and they're going to be left there. They're not going to move again, and then we're going to have more that move out to replace those molecules. And so that's where the, all these molecules get deposited on the outside, and we start to see this darker ring. Now, as we're kind of ending the evaporation process, and we're just going to have a, we're going to have left is the stain. There's no more liquid. Um, the edges do eventually depend, um, and that's just because it all has to evaporate. There has to be no liquid on the surface at some point, and we can see this in that third image, where I'm going to trace out this is where our liquid's at now. And this happens, when this starts happening, we get total evaporation pretty fast, and it leaves this uniform stain on the inside like we can see in D. Um, and so there we have our coffee ring. Um, and I just want to get down to the basics. Why do we have this circular shape to start with that leaves us this coffee ring? So as we have um, a liquid on a solid surface, we look at what's sort of like the circular shape. Now why does that happen? Um, and the main driving force that drives this is cohesion. And so when we have multiple solute molecules, or any kind of molecules, they usually have a force which is called cohesion between them, which just describes a force where the molecules of the same type are attracted to each other. And so they would rather be as close as they can to each other, and as long as there's no kind of you know, they're not in like a polarized solution or something, or they're not attracted to um, anything that's across the phase boundary. This is the driving force of how they want to arrange themselves. And so the easiest way for as many of the molecules to be touching as many of the other molecules as possible is to arrange themselves in a circle in our in two dimensions. Um, and what this does is this allows us to minimize the perimeter or the circumference um, with respect to an area, which we can see through this little proof here. Um, and so these molecules that we just drew up here are going to arrange themselves so they're touching as many other molecules, and they're going to arrange themselves in a circle. Now, since we're in a three-dimensional world, um, when we have a puddle on a solid surface, it's actually going to form a uh, want to form a sphere which is a three-dimensional um, kind of space-saving model 
with surface area with respect to volume, as we can see down here. Um, and so these these the solution is going to want to form a sphere on its surface. Now, obviously, we don't have like this nice little sphere of liquid on our surfaces, and that is because of two other reasons. And we have two more forces acting on the actual sphere, and that's going to be we're going to have gravity working down, obviously, um, and that's going to help. It's going to push this down. And there are also smaller, but still real, attractive forces between the molecules of our, our solution and to the surface that they're on. Um, they're much less usually than these cohesive forces, but they still exist and sort of give us this bold shape that we get um, for a puddle. And so the combination of these forces gives us this kind of model where we can see we have these cohesive forces. We also have these adhesive forces. And there's still gravity pointing down. Um, and this is kind of these cohesive forces that form on the outside, as we can see here, and form this outer bubble is what we call surface tension. And that um, is kind of what holds the bulb together instead of falling apart and laying completely flat on the surface. Um, now, this is kind of the basis for that shape of the coffee ring that we have. Um, and so, as the coffee or the solvent starts to evaporate, <clears throat> we know we have these pinned edges. Um, you would think from this, the way we're describing how we want to minimize surface area, that it would be most effective for the diameter of this bubble to actually decrease because that would decrease our our surface area and give us the most interaction between the water molecules themselves however because we have these pinned edges that does not we're not allowed to do that it it doesn't let us do that so instead we just kind of have this meniscus that is slowly decreasing in size until we finally get small enough to where we can have those deep pinned edges and then have a uniform coffee stain